When it comes to upside down cakes, pineapple may be everyone's go-to tropical fruit. But don't forget about mangoes. With their bright orange flesh and sweet tart taste, they're a great alternative. We've also added some banana and rum for tropical flavors to the cake, and actually they add a great amount of moisture from the first crumb to the very last bite. So let's start by making the caramel. I'm just gonna heat up this pot. I have a half a cup of sugar right into the pot, two tablespoons of water, and we just wanna dissolve the sugar and turn it into a deep dark caramel. Give this a little stir. With a caramel, you can stir in the beginning, but once it gets going, you don't wanna stir anymore. I'm gonna use a pastry brush and some water to brush down the sides of the pot. So what I'm doing is brushing the sugar that's on the sides of the pot into the water that's down below. We want everything to dissolve. We don't want any sugar crystals to fall back later, which would cause the whole caramel to crystallize and seize up. So this way, we'll get all the sugar dissolved. Now I see a little bit of sugar right in the middle that's not quite dissolved, so I'm just going to swirl the pot. And this will hopefully dissolve it. You don't want to stir at this point. Perfect, that looks great. I see it just starting to color around the sides, and I have a nine inch cake pan waiting. As it starts to color more, swirl the pan to even out the color. And the caramel's always gonna look a little bit darker in the pot than it does in the pan, so take it just a shade darker than you think. That's looking pretty good to me. It's a rich golden brown. I'm gonna pour it right into the cake pan and swirl my pan to cover the bottom of the pan. It doesn't quite cover. You can put this just on the hot burner. And don't worry, if you have some holes, it's fine. It's going to melt in the oven, so it will cover the entire base. Okay, now let's get going on the batter. It's super simple, two bowls, two whisks, and you're done. One cup of all-purpose flour, level it off. One cup of granulated sugar three quarter teaspoons of baking soda. This is the leavener. Just enough to give it some lift and a quarter teaspoon of coarse salt. That's gonna bring out all those great tropical flavors. We whisk this together. These are the dry ingredients. Now for the wet ingredients. We have one egg and one egg yolk, a half a cup of safflower oil. This is a really nice, just neutral flavored oil a third of a cup of buttermilk, delicious tang. Whisk these together. One teaspoon of pure vanilla extract. This is also a great tropical flavor and one of my favorite flavors. Two tablespoons of gold rum, delicious. This will add some acidity too, which is really nice to balance out the cake. Final ingredient is banana. I have a really nice ripe banana. This is definitely what you want. You wanna see some dark spots on the banana. The riper it is, the more flavor you're gonna get. You really want those dark spots on there. I need it mashed. I'm just gonna use a fork, break it up. We don't want big pieces of banana. We just want mashed banana to add flavor and moisture to our cake. We need a third of a cup. This looks perfect. This goes right into the egg mixture. Whisk it up, break up that banana. Okay, so now wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Just pour it in, it's such a great easy cake. Okay, that is our batter. So now we need to get going on cutting our mangoes. I have one mango already peeled, taken away from the pit, and sliced. About 10 slices here. I'm gonna do the same with a second mango. If you can find ripe, ripe mangoes, that's the best. They should yield a little bit when you press them. I can feel this one has a little bit of softness, so that's great. I'm just gonna use a regular peeler, take the peel off. You could also use a knife, but I find a peeler to be really easy to do this. Okay, that looks pretty good. All the skin and green is off. You can see the mango has kind of a broad side and then a more narrow side. So I'm guessing the pit is running like this. This will be the broad side of the pit and this is the edge. So I want to hold it like this 
and cut alongside of that pit and get a nice big cheek. And then you cut off the other side. So then from these two sides, do about five slices across. Okay, so there are about two more good pieces on this side. You want to cut up those two edges. You'll get two more good sized slices, so we can add those. Bring back our pan with the caramel. You can see it's cracked. It does that as it cools, not to worry. It's all going to melt in the oven and even out. Put in the mango. I'm going to lay it down on its flat side and cover the entire base. We want to really snuggle these pieces in together, following the curve of the pan. Take some time with this arrangement because you are going to see these mangoes just like this when you turn out your cake. So you want it to look decorative and pretty. I have two extra pieces. I'm going to just kind of fit them right on the top in any holes I have. So now our batter can go right on top. Just scrape it all in there. Cover up all those mango pieces. And this will go right into a preheated 350 degree oven. It'll get beautifully golden brown. It'll take about 50 minutes. Going right in the oven. Okay, the cake has been out of the oven for about 15 minutes. So now is the time that we need to turn it over. I'm gonna run a knife around the edge just to make sure it's released. I'll grab a cake plate, put it upside down on top, flip it over, see how it looks. Beautiful. Nice and caramelly. All the mangoes look amazing. So we'll let this cool completely before we slice into it. Serve it with some whipped cream or ice cream. You're gonna love the tropical flavors. You love the moistness and that golden caramel that's melted over the top is such a treat.